This time on Road and Race, I look at the market for a rear wheel drive coupe and explain why I think the 370Z is the one to go for. I'll then talk about how it drives and how it compares to its predecessor, the 350Z. This is the Nissan 370Z. It has a 3.7 litre V6 engine and produces 328 PS with 363 newton meters of torque. It gets from 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds and prices start from just under 30,000 pounds. So first off, let's look at the stats because if you're anything like me, the first thing I do when I'm looking to buy a new car is look at what they're like on paper. If you're after an entry level rear wheel drive coupe for about 30,000 pounds, you've only really got four choices as I see it. The Abarth 124, Toyota's GT86, Mazda's MX-5, and Nissan's 370Z. Now don't get me wrong, each of these cars has something special to offer, but none of them can match the 370Z in terms of performance. The 370Z has the most power, and the best power to weight ratio at 234 PS per ton. The other three all come out at about 160 to 180 PS per ton. And everything else is much more expensive. The new Z4 starts at £37,000 and if you're looking at something like a Lotus Elise or a Jaguar F-Type or a Porsche Cayman, you're looking at £47,000 just to begin with. But it's no good having the most power if the car drives badly. So what's the 370 Z like? One word! Terrific! Being a naturally aspirated engine, there's no lag, the power's always there when you need it, it's nice and smooth and there's this really cheeky little booster power when you hit about 6,000. The suspension on this car isn't electronically adjustable, but none of the cars in this price range have it either. And to be fair, it doesn't need to be. It's that great balance between being comfortable day to day and uh, responding well when pushed hard on these uh, country roads. It's really exciting to drive fast, but it's very easy as well because the car's so predictable. The seating position is really good, it's low, so you get a sense of what the car's doing. The gearbox, good as well, got a short throw, it's what you want, easy to find gears. And it's got a rev matching feature as well, so if I drop it down a gear, you can hear it. Rev matching, it just makes changing down a bit smoother. The four pot brakes also stop you enormously well. This and like to talk about their flat ride ideology and it's continued here. It's a very stiff chassis and it just makes pushing on and driving harder easy because it just gives you the feedback you need. Obviously being rear wheel drive there's no issue with any torque steer or the car bogging down on heavy acceleration. This car's got a fair amount of power just going to the rear wheels but with the traction control on you're never really going to have too much of a moment. Saying that though, if you want a bit more fun, turn it off on the track and you can really enjoy trying to tame the back end. This particular car has the GT spec which costs an extra £5,000 and gives you 19 inch alloy wheels, the Bose sound system, cruise control and heated seats. As some of you may know, I actually own a 350Z. So how does it compare to 370? Well, the two words I'd use to sum it up is simply more refined. The interior's better. There's more leather, more Alcantara. And I do like a bit of Alcantara. It's just here. And the seats are better. They hold you better. They're more supportive. They're less slippy. And the GT pack adds lumbar support. The 350Z is more of a mechanical brute. The steering's heavy. The gearbox is heavy. The clutch is very heavy which makes it great on the track. But day to day, it can be quite tiring to drive. And then in this car, the 370Z, it just strikes a really nice balance of having a lighter clutch, lighter steering, lighter gearbox, but not too much. It just works quite well. The stereo now supports a USB input, so you can connect your iPhone or whatnot to it and play music. There's no CarPlay or Android Auto support, which is a shame. But you do get a glove box. And whilst the 350Z had one small cup holder, in here you've got three. And for an extra £400 or so, you can add a rear reversing camera. One of the biggest problems with the 350Z was the boot. The rear strut bar took up too much room and was in a stupid place. 
and there was nothing stopping items you put in it, such as your shopping, flying out and hitting you in the face if you broke suddenly. Happily, they fixed all that by moving the bar forward and fitting a retractable cover. I also think the 370Z looks much more modern, sharp and aggressive. Saying all that, there are still a few areas that bug me. This cubby behind the seat on the 350Z had a lockable lid, but now there's no lid, so there's a new place for your shopping to hit you from. Annoyingly, whilst this car will tell you in at least two places your fuel economy, they've got rid of the digital speedometer. I love that thing. I don't know, maybe it's just a personal choice, but I just prefer looking at a digital speedo than an analog one, and they don't have it. It's annoying. And I'll come to my final little bugbear. I'll drop the car down a gear. The engine note. It's just not very good. In the 350Z you had like this great growl, it's like a really angry terrier. Here, it's just a bit whiny and it's also pumped in through the stereo. And when you're at high revs, it's also quite loud and it's not a very nice noise and yeah, it's just a shame that one. So to sum up then, this Nevtaker model's already a great handling car, just gone round and tweaked where needed. They made the car faster but also more comfortable and practical without losing its edge. If you'd like to watch my series of videos on repairing and modifying my 350Z, please click the top right box. And if you'd like to see more car reviews from me, it's the bottom right box. And as always, thanks for watching.